Cease fire. Cease fire. You all giving up, Hatfields. We'd like to negotiate a peaceful resolution to the hostilities. Are you McCoy's willing to negotiate? You sure do talk funny. The Hatfields don't use them big words. Are you their lawyer or something? My name is Marvin Hatfield. Can we negotiate? I don't know what that means, but if you wants to talk, we can talk. Good. I'm going to leave my weapons and come out unarmed. You're not going to shoot me, are you? No funny business. No funny business. Look, I'm unarmed. See, no weapons. All right, I'm coming out. But if you so much as twitch, the McCoys is all crack shots and they'll drop you like a bad habit. The McCoys have nothing to fear from the Hatfields. Come on out. Let's negotiate. I left my guns back there. But if you so much as blink, I'll slip you open and leave you as food for the crows. Please, put away the knife. I came to make peace. You got peace. Now what do you want? What we have is a ceasefire. Peace is not merely the absence of fighting. You sure do talk funny. Even if you're a Hatfield, there's no way you're from around here. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Marvin Hatfield. You're lucky I'm not feeding your gizzard to the birds, mister. What do you got in your hand there? Nothing. I was just going to shake hands with you. No Mikko ever shook hands with no Hatfield, far as I know. Well, if we're going to negotiate a lasting peace, I think now would be a good time to start, don't you? Don't suppose there'd be another way we could do this, is there? The first step to a lasting peace is a true commitment to peace. A handshake would be an excellent sign that you're committed to peace. Just in case this peace thing don't work out, I don't want you telling everybody that Jimmy Sue McCoy shook the hand of a Hatfield. That's a very firm handshake you have there, Jimmy Sue. It's nice to meet you. Okay, you wanted peace. You got peace. Now let's go home. Oh no, the handshake is only the beginning. It is. Yes, there are three more steps we must take to assure a lasting peace. You sure talk funny. You're not from around here, are you? My papa, Jethro Hatfield, sent me away to boarding school when I was a small boy. He was afraid I'd get killed if I stayed around here. I can see why he sent you away, boy. Why? Your beauty. Yes, well, let's move on to the next step in the peace process. You're a runt. I'm going to ignore your obvious attempts to rile me to anger, Jimmy Sue, because I have a firm commitment to peace. Can we move on to the next step in the peace process? I'm listening. The next step is to count the cost of hostility. That's easy. All you have to do is count the headstones in the McCoy family graveyard. I don't want to downplay the body count, Jimmy Sue. There are dead bodies on both sides of the Hatfield-McCoy feud. What I need to have you look at is what it cost you personally. That's easy too. I went through six husbands in five weeks. Six husbands in five weeks. Yup, you Hatfields have a way of putting your crosshairs on the McCoy that happened to just marry me. Then, I'd have to up and marry someone else. Fortunately, I had lots of cousins. We keep it in the family that way. What I was referring to was the day-to-day -day cost of being in conflict. For instance, my father sent me away to boarding school. Isolation is one of the most common side effects of conflict. I know what that's like. People in town is afraid to talk to the McCoys for fear the Hatfields will gun them down. Now you're getting the idea. What you want to do is ask yourself, if you had to start all over, knowing how isolated you'd be, would you have done it the same way? Not a chance. Me either. Now, the next step is asking yourself whether the killing solved the original disagreement. What disagreement? You don't remember why the Hatfields and McCoy started feuding in the first place. It's been going on longer than my papa could remember. I don't think anybody remembers how it started. So, we're all suffering the loss of loved ones and isolation, but there's no real disagreement. Nope. Long as I can remember the feud was you killed one of ours, so we kill one of yours. Well, then that brings us to the next step toward a lasting peace. We have to confess to each other the sins we've committed toward each other. Our side don't got none that I'm aware of. Then let me start off. I know my cousin Lemuel blew up your outhouse while your grandfather was taking his daily constitutional. Why? 
I ought to slate your gizzard for that. It wasn't me, Jimmy Sue. It was my cousin Lee Mule. Would you like to confess your family's part in any of the deaths? Nothing to confess. Then let me give you a reminder. Your Uncle Thaddeus and his two sons. Uncle Thaddeus and two of my cousins, one of which was married to me at the time, was just going for a ride in the country. Are you interested in a lasting peace or not? All right, I'll admit that them boys all had a bottle in their hand. What's wrong with drinking a little? What was in the bottles? Huh? I ask what was in the bottles. Okay, so it weren't nothing to drink in them bottles. It was gasoline in the bottles, wasn't it? Could have been they was looking to refuel a pickup truck. And wasn't there a rag stuffed into the neck of each bottle which was lit on fire? Yeah, so what? That don't give the Hatfields a right to start shooting at them. Where was the car when the Hatfields started shooting? On the Hatfields lawn. Excuse me. I said, they was on the Hatfields front lawn. All right, I'll confess, our boys went to the Hatfields to burn the place down. But that was in retaliation for splat drilling Grandpa and the most of what was under him all over the woodshed. It seems to me that my cousin Lemuel was retaliating for the death of my uncle Obediah. That was an accident. You blew up the bridge as he was crossing the river. Nothing left but fish food. Jimmy Sue, are you interested in peace or not? It was an accident, I tell you. Them boys was replacing the bridge. We couldn't help it if Obedi a Hatfield was. Jimmy Sue. All right. I confess, it was cold-blooded murder. They was all cold-blooded murders. Ours were too. Now that we've confessed, the next step in the peace process is to establish new rules of conflict. Unless it's all right with you that you keep losing husbands. Ain't no more husbands to lose. All the McCoys is dead, except me. I probably shouldn't have said that still we was through negotiating. Now you know. You Hatfields finally got us McCoys outnumbered. You signal to the rest of the Hatfields and I'll slit you from ear to ear. Jimmy Sue, I'm not going to signal anybody. I probably shouldn't be telling you this but I'm the last of the Hatfields too. You're just saying that so. Then, one of your shark suitors will pick me off. First of all, I meant what I said, Jimmy Sue. I'm the only one left. Second, I am committed to peace. Killing is not an option for me anymore, if I have a disagreement with you. I don't care how many guns we have on each side, I will come to you and we'll talk it out. I don't know you Hatfields is only one McCoy away from winning the war. The war is over for me, Jimmy Sue. No more killing, even if there were a dozen people over there with high-powered rifles. I would not let them shoot you. What you have to decide now is whether you want to kill the only remaining Hatfield or if you are really committed to peace. I'm no four-flusher. I keep my word. If you die, it's not going to be by my hand. It's not that I don't trust you, Hatfield. Call me Marvin. It's not that I don't trust you, Marvin. But just to be on the safe side. You're staying between me and them until these here negotiations is over. That's fair enough. Now let's practice conflict resolution. What's that? It's the final step to a lasting peace. Suppose my goat gets into your garden and eats all your sweet peas. What do you do? I pull out my 357 Magnum and blow his head off. Wrong answer. Oh, I suppose you got a better solution. You bring the goat back to me and tell me what he did. Then I pay you for the lost vegetables. That way I keep my goat. Your losses are covered and we avoid conflict. Sounds fair enough. Suppose my dog tears up your chicken coop and eats a couple of your chickens. I bring the dog back to you and tell you the damage he's done. Then we sit down and come up with a fair settlement. If you're committed to peace, Jimmy Sue, there's always a peaceful solution. I sure do like the way you talk, boy. I suppose you don't slap around your women folk much, either, do you? I've never been married. Would you like to be? Excuse me. I ain't had a husband in near four days. I'll even settle for a puny little runt like you. Yes, well, I guess we've completed our negotiations. I'll just be going now. What's your hurry, boy? I kind of like this here conflict resolution. Let's talk about my hearts getting into your dishes. Based on a play by Bob Snook, Conditions for Use. 
Do not sell any part of this script, even if you rewrite it. Pay no royalties, even if you make money from the performance. You may reproduce and distribute this freely, but all copies must contain this statement.